September 14th, 2018, the day when two-set violin changed forever. It was the day they posted one of their most famous videos, the world's fastest and most inaccurate violinist, which was a flaming critique of Ben Lee, past record holder for the fastest violinist in the world. Brett and Eddie's satirical roasting of a violinist who had completely forgotten playing Flight of the Bumblebee with accurate musicality in favor of meaningless speed propelled their career and reputation to new heights. The video and its successors spawned popular inside jokes found on classical music content all over the internet, an entire merch collection, and most importantly, established two-set violin as classical music crusaders, valiantly fighting against misrepresentations of and affronts to the genre. Even two years later, that video is still remarkably relevant, and the infamous phrase If you can play something slowly, you can play it quickly still circulates among the fandom to this day. However, as two-set violin rose meteorically with every subsequent throwdown, it seems that Ben Lee, as a musician and as a person, had been left behind in all the madness. I've always wanted to look past the single BBC performance and get to know who Ben Lee was beyond one infamous incident over six years ago. What was the context behind the performance and the record? What came of the career with his rock violin band, Fuse, that he tried to promote with this publicity stunt? What is Ben Lee doing today? Join me in my investigation into the speedy boy himself. Why don't you go for this Guinness World Record? It has been set and I aim to break it. There is, I think that is the musical integrity, is to have fun and to wow people with it. Playing random glisses that doesn't even resemble what the composer writes is not musical integrity. This is one and a half million dollars, is it, this yeah. one? That smile, he's not having fun. He's here to sell his two million dollar violin, that's what he's doing. I figured that a good starting place for looking up a person's life and career would be their Wikipedia page. Remember when Ben's Wikipedia page got vandalized after two sets roast? Those were really interesting times to be in the fandom. Also, I learned that if you just google the name Ben Lee, an Australian guy comes up first, so you have to specify violin at the end to get who we're looking for. Make of that detail what you will. From there, I decided that relevant sources also included Fuse's official website, as well as their social media pages on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Something really funny is that when I was looking for their Facebook page, I clicked the link on their YouTube channel, right? And it redirected me to this Facebook page of the Serbian rock band made up of five middle-aged men. Yeah, who's gonna tell Fuse Violin that they linked their own YouTube page to the wrong Fuse rock band? I know I'm not gonna tell them. I tried the Facebook link on their official website. First of all, can we talk about how old all of these social media links are? They're all ancient versions of every single social media logo. They even have a link for MySpace. I wasn't old enough to have used MySpace and I'm legally an adult. It seems that they deleted their Facebook page, that's too bad. Lastly, each Fuse member's individual social media presence is also important for my research. So I pulled up the Twitter and Instagram of Ben, as well as the Wikipedia page, Twitter and Instagram for Ben's bandmate, Lindsay Stoppard. When I was looking through all of these pages for information, some funnier findings came up along the way, so I'll just get all of them out of the way before I get into the more serious details. The incorrect Facebook link on their YouTube and the old social media links weren't the only things suggesting that their online presence hasn't been updated for at least a little while. There are these hot neon pink banner ads all over their website advertising their new album that came out 10 years ago. I wonder if they've released new music since then. Their YouTube page indicates they released a single called Shallow Seas four years ago, and believe it or not, I actually found them on Spotify, and they actually released another new single in 2020. So they're maybe not as inactive as their website makes them seem. I listened to their new single, actually, and it's, it's okay. They have two different tabs labeled News and Press. Aren't they the same thing? Either way, one of the tabs doesn't work and the other tabs just have photos of old newspapers that I can't even enlarge to read. I tried looking up if Fuse has been getting news coverage, and the latest article seems to be from 2013, so it's maybe not news. Here's a really funny quote about their performances from their website. Live, it is nothing short of explosive. The violins are generally accompanied by the sounds of jaws dropping. <laughs> Oh 
Oh man, they have specific tabs about their gold violins and their crystal violins. Remember how obnoxious Ben was during his interview about his $1.5 million Swarovski crystal violin? And how he was selling it like it was Fuse's merch? I honestly thought even as expensive as they are, their gold and crystal violins were, might be limited edition items that really rich people could get as souvenir items if they wanted to. But no, they're just the instruments exclusive to the performers themselves that they use in their gigs. It's absolutely mind-boggling how much of their media coverage, how many newspaper articles I've seen, and how their identities revolve around the instruments they play instead of the music they make. I don't even think other rock musicians or violinists fixate on their expensive instruments as much as they do. And it's something interesting to chew on for a bit. Here's another fun quote. They are stunning works of art by one of Britain's most renowned jewelers and because Bridge, the original makers of the violins, have been involved from the outset, the integrity and sound of each instrument is maintained. We love the fact that whilst they have become pieces of art, we can still play the songs from our new album, Fuse, on them. So what they're trying to tell us is that their expensive violins have the uh, amazing ability of making sounds, the bar here is on the ground. All right, I'm done roasting them. Honestly, they've gone through enough roasting and they didn't need me to further poke fun at them, but I couldn't not tell you that their 2010 album is out now. <laughs> Anyways, it is my responsibility to move past the surface level jokes and laughs about their outdated website and their tacky expensive violins and Ben Lee's sacrilegious performance and truly get to know who the people behind Fuse are and what motivates them to do what they do, even if we don't understand all of it. I believe it is time for me to take a deeper dive. I started reading the contents of their websites more carefully and looked at all their social media posts, and there are so, so many things that jumped out to me as strange that could possibly help us understand the workings of Fuse more closely. Let's ease into all the details slowly. It is a lot to process. I looked at Ben and Lindsay's Wikipedia pages first. First of all, it's already weird that Ben and Lindsay have their own separate pages, but their band Fuse does not, even though it's the primary entity they promote under. I suppose all we need to know about Fuse is already summarized in the Fuse sections in both of their pages and it's not that long, but why doesn't Fuse have the page with information about both members within it? That's kind of strange. Also, Ben's website in his article is the Fuse official website we looked at, but Lindsay has her own website under her own name, lindsaystopper.com, separate from Ben, by the way. There's not much on her website, so I won't talk about it in this video, but I want you guys to start thinking about why one member of a two-member band has seemingly branched out and done her own little thing, while the other member hasn't. Next, I looked at Fuse's, Ben, and Lindsay's Twitter accounts. Let's look at Fuse first. Isn't it so weird how literally all of their feed is reposting almost Lindsay's entire feed, essentially? Even if some of the posts have nothing to do with Fuse itself, they only retweeted Ben once in recent history, five months ago. And the last time the Fuse account posted unique content of its own was in January. Also, Lindsay's verified on Twitter, but Ben and the Fuse official account aren't, despite all of them having a similar follow count. We see a similar trend on Instagram. None of them are verified there, but you can see Ben and Fuse have a similar follower count at like 1,000 to 2,000. But Lindsay has 16.1k! Why in the world? What compelling content is Lindsay posting that earned her the verified badge on Twitter and 16 times as many Instagram followers as Ben and the band she's a part of. Her posts are literally one throwback post after another of Fuse gigs from years ago and red carpet events, which really make me wonder if Fuse have gotten any new recent gigs for the past couple of years. Also, if it's a throwback photo to a Fuse gig, shouldn't Fuse be making that post and maybe Lindsay would retweet it? Lindsay's posts are either throwback Thursdays, as I've said, or Happy insert day of the week post. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this band. I really want to know what they're up to recently between albums. Well, according to their Twitter, their lead singer wants us to have a good weekend. 
If I'm starting to sound like I'm picking at numbers, can you imagine how weird it would be if you translate that onto two set? For example, if Eddie was verified on Instagram, but Brett and most importantly, the two set official account weren't. And all the two set violin account did was repost stuff about what Eddie was doing recently instead of anything about their videos or their tours or whatever two set is doing. In this case, it wouldn't even be what Eddie was doing recently. It would be what Eddie was doing five years ago and was thinking about recently. Going back to my research, these findings raise one very important question. Why does Lindsay have a social media presence that is much larger and nearly separate from her bandmate and the band itself? Her past with Fuse is all she tweets about, yet Fuse retweets her as if the band is a part of her, instead of her being a member of the band. Most importantly, we have to turn our focus back to our protagonist, Ben Lee. Ben posts about his own life on social media, but he is notably absent in Fuse's and Lindsay's posts. Where does he fit into all of these clues, and what does that have to do with what we've seen of him in the past? To start to find answers, I think we'll need to do some close reading. On their website is a section called Meet Fuse. I think a more detailed biography will definitely help with getting to know who they are and how they started. Lindsay had an enviable reputation as a solo electric violinist performing at prestigious events globally, but was looking for a musical director to help take her ambitions to the next level. She and Ben first met when she borrowed his purple Yamaha violin for a photo shoot. They gave me a 50 quid deposit for a violin worth a grand and drove off. I was a little naive, but it all worked out. For a couple of years, Ben worked in the studio with Lindsay until the idea of forming a duo clicked. That is such a strange situation for two bandmates to meet for the first time. I'm picturing the scenario in my head, and I think it goes a little like this. Hello, who are you all? You must be Mr. Lee. We've heard you are well-versed and well-equipped with electric violins. Well, if I can say so myself, what do you need, sir? We work for Mrs. Lindsay Stoppard, fantastic electric violinist. You may have heard of her. The lady requires a good instrument for her photo shoot tonight, and we would like to borrow your purple Yamaha. Hmm, I can lend you the instrument, but keep in mind it does cost a grand and I absolutely need my electric violin back. It is irreplaceable. How can I guarantee you won't take off with my electric violin? About that, um... Here's 50 bucks. We have to leave immediately. The appointment is urgent. We promise we will return promptly with this instrument. Uh, okay, bye. Wow, that was, uh... I, I sure hope they bring it back. Based on the three sentences of the bio we just read, it's already clear that Fuse was never meant to be a close-knit group or a collaborative effort in the way we typically envision bands to work. From the onset, Ben's role in Fuse was helping Lindsay with whatever she wanted. Definitely more of a producer-performer relationship instead of the co-star dynamic that typical bands have. Let's keep reading further down the page, we're in Lindsay's individual bio now. Lindsay built up an enviable reputation as a solo electric violinist performing at prestigious events globally but was What is up with them in copying sentences across several paragraphs on the same page? Anyways. In 2006, Lindsay met Ben Pitch Lee. I'm sorry, that, I'm sorry for getting sidetracked. That nickname is so funny. Yeah, they call me Pitch in these streets. <laughs> Who was also doing sessions and performing with various string acts. Ben became Lindsay's executive producer, adding his technical know-how to acclaimed performances. The beginning of the perfect partnership was taking place. Again, they stated that Fuse is a partnership, used to further Lindsay's solo career, and was never meant to promote both of its members equally. At the end of Lindsay's bio, it also says she's signed to another agency as a model, which definitely explains why there's so many more solo shots of Lindsay at Fuse gigs than Ben. I've been looking up Fuse group photos for this video, and I've noticed that Lindsay always looks good, while Ben's looks have been a little bit more hit or miss. Moving on, we scroll down to Ben's individual bio. It opens up with all the stuff he's done, all the awards he won, the bands he toured with, the people he worked with, and then this. Next was a collaboration that would change Ben's musical career forever. 
Ben was approached by the manager of Lindsay Stoppard to write and produce music for her solo violin live shows. As their working relationship grew, they realized that they shared a common ambition to push the boundaries of what is most commonly regarded as a classical instrument, dispelling the stereotype once and for all. Not satisfied with being another crossover cliché, Fuse was born. Up until now, we've seen multiple mentions of Lindsay's illustrious solo career and even an entire website dedicated to her. And we also saw how the entire formation of Fuse itself was meant to further Lindsay's amazing career. But Ben's bio also showed how awesome his pre-Fuse career was as well. Well, I guess he doesn't matter anymore because his job now is to produce tracks for his bandmate. At least he gets to tag along and perform with her as well. Now, why did I spend all of my research highlighting the disparity in social media and power dynamics between two members of the same band? Let's tie it back in with the clip that captured our attention at the very beginning. Ben Lee's world record attempt at being the fastest violinist in the world. Let's remind ourselves of how he set it up. What gave you the idea of playing, I mean, obviously you've been probably playing the violin since you were a kid, but mm -hmm. playing it fast? Well, I was knocked off in a bike accident cycling around London about four years ago. I really hurt my wrist. My bandmate in the band Fuse said, uh, Ben, why don't you see this as a target of rehabilitation? Why don't you go for this Guinness World Record? It had been set and I aimed to break it. Whose idea was this? I'm sorry, Ben, it was, this is all my fault. It um, is her fault. <laughs> so it's so your <laughs> idea, Lindsay, was it? Yeah. Well, well, why did you think you could do it? Well, I've heard Ben shred Van Halen and Jimmy Page on the violin, and there's not many violinists that can do that. Mm. And he's probably like one of the most exciting violinists in the world. So. Oh, Lindsay. Oh, um, bless. I challenged him. Now, how does this relate to everything we've learned about Few so far? They claim the record attempt was for Ben to rehabilitate his wrist injury. But I believe if you're going to try for a title as big as the fastest violinist in the world, previously held by David Garrett, no less, you're sure as hell gonna try to get some publicity out of it, which he did. <laughs> Had the publicity stunt been successful, which I'm sure it was for a few years after the attempt, even if it's Ben Lee's own record, he'd bring attention to Fuse and, by association, Lindsay, who Fuse was primarily designed to benefit. But what we saw happen was Tusa absolutely decimating his performance with one fell swoop. When that video spread like wildfire and public opinion on the world record shifted, Ben received 100% of the fallout. Please note that I'm not trying to bag out Lindsay and accuse her of telling Ben to attempt a high-stakes publicity stunt for her own benefit. In fact, I highly doubt Lindsay has much control over the entire few setup, because much of the arrangement appears to be coordinated by her own manager and other higher-ups who would benefit from her success. I'm just trying to portray Ben Lee in a different light than the sacrilegious, unmusical, violin shredder people see him as. After all of my research, I see Ben now as a selfless producer who had been taken advantage of by money-hungry executives. Ben has been hustling hard to promote his group and his bandmate without much appreciation or acknowledgement for his work, only to receive all of the blowback and, in the worst cases, harassment from a poorly judged publicity stunt. This does not mean I condone his performance in interview. I maintain that the interview was dodgy and arrogant, the performance was terrible, and if you can play it slowly, you can play it quickly is badly worded advice. I just hope that a little bit more context could help more people see that there was so much responsibility on Ben's shoulders to promote his band and his bandmate well, how he was motivated to undertake such a world record, and how he might just be a little bit misunderstood. I want to end this video with a more lighthearted check-in with what Ben has been up to since his infamous Bumblebee fame. He doesn't appear to post super often on social media as I've said before, but we can still see he's up to some really cool stuff. He had a gig as recently as this past February, though it doesn't appear to be a Fuse gig. That's interesting. He grew his hair out in quarantine, and dare I say, Ben Lee looks good with long hair. During the pandemic, he has been virtually producing and recording music. He recorded music for the PlayStation 5, which is epic, if you ask me. Also, is that a real wooden violin? And good musical playing? I've always known you were talented, Ben. He's also been spending more time with his wife and kids, entertaining many quarantine hobbies along the way. 
Ben's social media presence may not be frequent, but it's refreshing and personal. Compared to posts he made in the past as recently as 2019, he recently doesn't seem to be as beholden to Fuse as he used to. You don't see him posting or retweeting photos and videos of what Fuse used to be five years ago. Again, I swear I'm not trying to insult Lindsay. In fact, I'm a bit concerned for her that most of what she has posted for at least the past few months are purely Fuse-related and not any recent events that she's been doing. But we're not talking about Lindsay. I'm focusing on Ben here, and his posts make me feel less concerned that he's stuck in a band that underappreciates him. He has redeemed himself as a talented producer, record artist, violinist, and generally good person who screwed up once and still graciously entertains jokes people make about it. Thank you guys for watching this video. Going back and checking in on people Tusa have discussed in the past has always been something I wanted to do, so please let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video, whether your outlook on Ben Lee changed even a little, and any other video ideas you may have for me. I'll see you fellow wannabes in a future video with an unpredictable topic. See y'all! Thank you.